everybody, Kevin Kraft here down in the Columbia, Maryland tour van for Second Swing Golf. Today I want to talk about uh, a little bit about spin. So one of the most common questions that I get is, you know, why does my ball spin the way it does? So we're going to talk a little bit about um, why the ball spins how it does, um, some advantages and disadvantages of that spin. So. Uh, for today, we're going to talk specifically about wedges. Um, I get a lot of people that say, you know, will this thing make my ball spin back? Well, that's pretty much never going to be something that I want to try and accomplish in a fitting. I don't want to have the ball spinning back. Guys on tour hate spin, right? They want enough spin that they can make the ball stop. But if you were watching the Masters a few years ago, Sergio Garcia pulled five in a row back into the water on 15. Sergio hates spin. He also happens to be one of the guys that creates the most spin because of uh, the dynamics of his golf swing. So when we're talking about spin, we want to have enough to make the ball stop, but not really enough to you know, spin it back all the time. It's impossible to get it a backhand, back pin that way. So um, the problem is we can't just say, well, if we make this modification or if you do this or you do this, the ball will spin this way. There's too many different factors that go into creating spin. There's loft of the club, that's where the ball is struck on the club. There is club head speed, there's angle of attack, uh, there's how fresh the grooves are. Um, all these different things go into creating spin. So unfortunately we just can't fix this thing and have it all work out. So we have to kind of work with things the best we can and try and get it, uh, try and get it handled uh, as best as possible. So um, if you're looking at pre-owned wedges, the way I approach a pre-owned wedge sale is I'm going to look not so much at the grooves themselves, I'm going to look at the face of the golf club and see if we've got a wear pattern. Uh, a wear pattern is a pretty good indicator that it's time to change wedges. Um, I change my sand wedge and lob wedge every single year, whether I need it or not. Guys on tour switch multiple times during the season because they want the most bite possible, again, without spinning it back. Um, but if you've got a wedge that you're looking at, you really want to check out the mill marks between the grooves themselves. If I'm looking at, say, a, a Vokey SM7 that I'm looking at for a customer, I'm going to look to make sure that I can see good mill marks between the grooves. That'll mean that this golf club has still got some good life left in it. Um, a lot of it's going to depend on how much somebody practices. You know, you can go through wedges very, very quickly. If you hit a lot of bunker shots or you do, uh, all, if you hit off of fairly sandy turf, you'll see that on uh, driving ranges a lot. Um, you know, you'll go through wedges more frequently. You don't see it as much in a gap wedge or pitching wedge. Um, you know, a good set of irons can last you you know, 10 years or more. Um, but wedges, because they're control shots, these are our green lighters. These are the ones that we want to be, you know, stuffing as close as possible to the pin. We want to get those as fresh as we can and keep them fresh so that we're getting the most control. So, um, interesting story about spin. So, I spent a few years on what's now the Corn Ferry Tour. And traveling from place to place, you had crowds that reacted very differently to shots. There were places where you could hit a really, really good shot and get nothing, and you could hit some, some really uh, marginal shots and get a lot of applause. So one of those really comes with spin. So for instance, I was playing with a guy last round in Boise, and uh, he had hit his tee shot on the par 5 16th hole a little bit out to the right and he ended up on some mulch and he had about 260 left and he carved a three wood out of this mulch, ran it probably 50, 60 yards up the fairway onto the green, pins in the back left corner, tough to get at, ball takes goes up, takes the uh, hill, rolls all the way down probably within 12 feet of the hole. Probably the best shot I'd seen maybe the whole year, absolute crickets from the crowd. I mean, I'm standing back there clapping in the fairway because it's just a magnificent golf shot. 
absolutely nothing from the, from the crowd. And the Boise crowd's awesome. We had huge, huge turnouts. It was very well received. You just never know what you're gonna get from the crowd. So how does that link with wedges? Well, uh, on the 18th hole, which was an uphill par four, which you could get a wedge in your hand, guys would clap and clap and clap. They'd see that ball land close, kind of two-tiered green, right? So that ball would land close, jump forward a little bit, and then spin right back down that second tier. Pin was always in the back on the, on the last day. And they'd go wild. They'd go, they'd be clapping and cheering. And you know, we're standing back down there. If we know that we put too much spin on it, you know, you can kind of you can manipulate the club in your golf swing a little bit to take some spin off or put some spin on it. Um, you know, we knew that it wasn't good, but they love seeing that stuff. So um, last little bit about spin. Um, in order to control spin with wedges, you can vary the speed and the way you play shots uh, in terms of creating lag and therefore, you know, de-lofting the club and also on how much you hit down on it. When you hit down on a wedge, okay, imagine you hit a ball like this. That ball is going to come off this way. It's not really going to have that much spin. You hit down on it, right? That ball is going to spin a lot faster, and you're going to get you're going to get a higher spin. Ball is going to uh, stop faster, potentially not go as far, especially in the wind. So if you've got a shot back into the wind, and so it pins in the back, right? Uh, if you say you got 100 yards, and that's normally a sandwich for you. If you hit a hard sandwich to try and get that ball to go 100 yards, likelihood is it's going to come up short because that ball is going to be hit harder, faster ball speed, it's going to have more spin, and the wind's going to work on it more. You're actually way better off dropping down a club, go to like a gap wedge, maybe even a pitching wedge, and take a nice smooth, easy swing. It's going to take the spin off, won't fly as high, it's going to land a little bit shorter, hopefully, obviously it takes a little bit of practice, and then roll out a little bit rather than getting that ball that's really coming back by the time it gets to the green. So there's a quick little, little uh, talk about spin. Uh, we can go into all kinds of different dynamics there, but uh, that's sort of the, you know, just the, the nuts and bolts of it. Um, definitely look at your wedges, see if it's time. Now I know there's guys, you, you get that wedge that you absolutely love, it can be hard to get rid of. I've seen a lot of clubs that are in there for sentimental value. Time for a new wedge, folks. Let's, uh, let's get you updated. Go see a fitter. We'll talk you through the process. Y'all stay safe.